You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. In Georgia, all eyes on the nation are on that particular state. And folks, already Republicans are playing shenanigans when it comes to voting. Cobb County has announced that they will eliminate over half of the county's early voting locations. Uh, being that many of these locations are in black and Latino communities, the move will disproportionately affect people of color. Several groups, including the NAACP and, uh, and the Southern Poverty Law Center, Black Voters Matter, and the ACLU of Georgia sent a letter to the Cobb County Board of Commissioners and Cobb County Board of Elections and Registration to express their concerns. The letter stressed the importance of early voting accessibility stating that advanced voting opportunities are vital to ensuring voters can safely, securely, and freely participate in our democracy. The COVID-19 pandemic, which is ravaging the nation, has had extremely harsh effects in communities of color, especially African Americans. And so uh, what they said is that, um, again, they say it is an untenable option for many voters. Now, activists are hoping Cobb County election officials are going to reverse their decision. Cobb made the decision, they said, because due to the drawn out proceedings uh, of the November 3rd election, because of also the holidays, they don't have the additional personnel needed to, to have those locations open. But there was a significant turnaround in Cobb County this year going for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Cobb County also is the third most populous county. Listen to me clearly. The third most populous county in the state. And so voting rights advocates say this is an attempt to improve the chances of Kelly Leffler, as well as David Perdue, in their battle against John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. Hmm. Ain't that grand. Uh, folks, do we have our guest uh, ready? Let me know, please, uh, to talk about this here. This is a huge deal. I do want to bring in my, my panel as well. Michael M. Hotep hosts the African History Network show. Candace Kelly, legal analyst, uh, and Rena Shaw, the Lincoln Project Women's Coalition. Uh, we're going to talk to in a second to the spokesman uh, for the Warnock campaign about this very issue. I want to go to you first, um, Michael, and that is this here. Uh, again, the reason we have problems it's because of this goes back to Shelby v. Holder decision. The yes. U.S. Supreme Court determined uh, that uh, it was unconstitutional, the whole issue of preclearance, all right? Gutting, mm -hmm. gutting that particular section. Republicans have, been, have refused to fix that. As a result, since that decision, Republican-led states have been rushing to put in voter suppression if Shelby v. Holder had not been ruled. If the Voting Rights Act was still intact, then they would have had to get permission from the Department of Justice to make one of these moves. This is one of those lasting impacts of that Supreme Court decision. Absolutely, Roland, and thanks for once again uh, for having me on. So it, Shelby County versus Holder is extremely important, 2013 U.S. Supreme Court case. And when I speak across the country prior to COVID, I would ask many African-Americans about that court case U.S. Supreme Court case, and they didn't know about it. You got to go back to 2012, 2012 presidential election. That preceded 2013, and there was a record number of African, the, the turnout percentage-wise of African Americans voting in that 2012 presidential election that President Obama was on the ballot was a record number, 66.6% .6 of African Americans registered to vote voted. And based upon my research, that was the first time the percentage of African Americans voting was higher than the percentage of white people voting. Shelby County versus Holder was a backlash to that. And what happens is, Roland, is that because many of our people don't understand history, we don't understand these cycles of backlash that take place. Okay, whether we talk about the end of Reconstruction, whether we talk about the end of the second Reconstruction, and Richard Nixon being elected in 1968, running on the platform of law and order which was a backlash to the Black Power movement, the Civil Rights Movement, all of that. So right after Shelby County versus Holder, you had all these new states that started coming out with new voter ID laws. And then this impacted the 2016 presidential campaign, where there were 868 fewer polling places 
we, we're not a lot of people. You connect the dots, but a lot of our people don't know that these dots exist to connect them because of Shelby County versus Holder, U.S. Supreme Court case 2013. And you had these these Republican led states that started shutting down these polling places because they didn't have to get clearance from a federal judge. Ari Berman, who uh, wrote the article that you um, uh, uh, are going to talk about for Mother Jones, Ari Berman wrote, wrote a series of articles for the nation in the 26 during the 2016 presidential election dealing with this. And he has one that talks about how there were 868 fewer polling places. Today is somewhere around 1,600, 1,700 fewer polling places. So we have to understand how all these dots are connected. And lastly, if the African-American vote did not matter, we have to ask ourselves, why do people work so hard to suppress our vote? Why are they going to the U.S. Supreme Court? Why are they shutting down all these polling places, many of them in African-American and Hispanic, largely populated communities? So we have to understand this history and understand any time you have periods of time of uh, perceived advances by African-Americans, there's always a white backlash. Yeah. We got to understand that history to be able to defend and block against that backlash. Candace, again, Cobb County says we simply don't have the staff. Are you buying that? I am not buying that. And neither is Latasha Brown of Black Voters Matter. And I want to quote her by saying, there's one thing that you can counter Republicans for, and that is being racist and voter suppression. And they have stepped up and they have risen to the occasion. And so in this situation, we see that the, 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 that the machine continues to work to make sure that the numbers of black folks cannot get to the polls. I mean, if we look at the overarching, just everything that's going on, from what Donald Trump is doing on down, this is really kind of like a, an overthrowing of the government. If we look at what that means, we're looking at people who don't want certain people to be in place. And that's exactly what Donald Trump is doing. And all the way down, all the Republicans in Georgia are working under the same uh, kind of premise that Donald Trump is working on. And that's what we are seeing here. But as Latasha Brown said, and as everybody has said, who's been working on the ground in order to make sure that these places aren't closed, they are not having it. They are going to work. They are in the trenches. They are working right now. This is something that wasn't a surprise. So they already have their plan B in action. Uh, Rena, the uh, what's interesting is that DeKalb County, they're actually expanding polling locations uh, for the runoff election. Uh, Cobb County also, Republicans, that, that is considered a Republican county. They had a four to one majority. Uh, that lead has shrunk. I think it's now down to three to two. Uh, and so uh, there's no doubt uh, in my mind you are seeing the impact. And for them to shut down one of the early voting locations in a black neighborhood, we know what that's all about. <laughs> Look, I think we should talk about the facts here because we can wax on all day about what this really means for communities of color and particularly black Georgians and how this is really disenfranchisement at its sickest, most really, really bottom of the barrel type of actions from elected officials there. Um, but we, again, talking about the facts, turnout is everything. That's what this is all about, this runoff election. And we look at history and we see that black voters in Georgia haven't turned out in high rates. But this is the year that could be different because of the work of people like Stacey Abrams. She did the work in groups like Fair Fight, Black Voters Matter, New Georgia Project. Lots of African Americans were fired up after Stacey Abrams lost. And they've done the work. It shows in the, it, I mean, it showed in the general election. So this is going to make a dent again. This work is is going to be impactful. Um, it's going to be tough. This is an uphill battle, no doubt. But in the last four years, there's been a huge increase in Georgia registered voters in general. So when we look at the GOP, I see one thing happening here. And I think the GOP, uh, frankly, at the Georgia level right now is very much sabotaging itself as well. Trump is doing the Georgia GOP no favors. Um, However, you look at Purdue and Loeffler, and they're calling on the Georgia Secretary of State, Raffensperger, who wrote the op-ed, saying that he went out and, and he supported Trump. He and his family, they voted for Trump. And, and do, after doing what he did, he suffered the repercussions that Republicans like me suffered long ago. When you fall out of line, it seems like the mob is coming for you. He's had death threats and, and the most vile things said about his wife. But again, 
Purdue and Loeffler, uh, Loeffler, sorry, are uh, are really talking about Raffensperger and they're calling on him to resign. I think that's a little bit of a sabotage technique. And then they're talking about Trump's lawyers hijacking their campaigns, essentially. So they're telling Republicans not to vote for them. This is this is a again all goes back to the whole the election was rigged. Right. There's a lot of confusion. So I think maybe that actually does help the case of uh, of Democrats in Georgia. And uh, one final point, though. Coalitions are important. What we see happening in Cobb County, really, is the coalition that's built by the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund, right. All Voting is Local, Georgia Southern Poverty Law Center Action Fund. These groups are pivotal. So it's important for these groups to come together to fight voter suppression because it shows the unified coalition. And that's honestly the first most important step. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.